to PVTV International. I'm going to present this week editions of our news roundup. Adding President Argus, multifaceted assistant in a line ERO's military offensive. During the 39th Cabinet meeting of the National Unity Government NUD on December 19, adding President Duala Shilar emphasized the intrinsic link between the success of different ethnic groups, revolutionary efforts, and the overall success of the Spring Revolution. He called for comprehensive support from various sectors in the military offensive of allied ethnic resistance organizations, EROs. The Three Brotherhood Alliance has been expanding its military offensive and has notably achieved multiple victories, stated the aging president. We must recognize that the success of ethnic groups' revolution is intertwined with the success of the Spring Revolution. Therefore, it is crucial to provide all possible support to our allied EROs in their military offensive. The Adam President also highlighted that pursuing the part of armed resistance does not imply advancing the revolution without rules and responsibilities. He stressed the importance of adhering to a proper code of conduct for a just war, emphasizing the protections of the nation's citizens. The Adam President affirmed that the NUG would never steer the revolution towards a part without principles. Prime Minister warns of possible investigations into Myanmar's military communication networks. During a meeting with officials from the Ministry of Communications, Information and Technology and Civil Disobedience Movement CDN staff on December 16, Prime Minister Mawin Kaindan asked everyone to remain vigilant. Despite the military causes weakening on multiple fronts, it still possesses the capability to conduct effective investigation through its communication network. The Prime Minister noted that while the Myanmar military is losing strength and unable to provide reinforcement in the field, it can still carry out airstrikes across the country. He emphasized that people can only be seized from this attack by receiving timely and accurate news and information. He asked for preparations in areas where fighting may intensify. Furthermore, the Prime Minister highlighted the Honda's actions in cutting off phone and internet services. He called for all necessary preparations to be made in advance to overcome these disruptions. Cabinet News NUG commemorates migrant Myanmar workers for preventing foreign earnings from flowing to Myanmar Military Council. In a public announcement on December 20, the National Unity Government NUT commended the resilience of Myanmar workers abroad who are steadfastly opposing the terrorist military council. It is stated that due to the enthusiastic civil disobedience of Burmese migrant workers, the foreign currency incomes for the terrorist military council has significantly decreased, which has led to a crisis in order to execute their terrorist acts. The strong resistance demonstrated by these workers against the illegitimate military dictatorship resulting in a drastic drop in a foreign exchange earnings flowing into Myanmar, down to a tenth of the previously recorded average amount. The NUG expressed its deepest gratitude to these migrant Myanmar workers for their passionate efforts in stifling the Myanmar military council's revenue channels. Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Uta Mouton continued his role as permanent representative to the UN. Following a resolution by the Credentials Committee to delay a decision on who will represent Myanmar during the 78th UN General Assembly, the United Nations will continue to recognize Uta Mouton as the country's representative as announced on December 18 by the NUG Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The 78th section of the UN General Assembly, held at the UN headquarters in New York on December 18, saw the Credentials Committee, chaired by the representative from Solomon Islands, receiving two submissions for candidates to represent Myanmar. This led the committee chair to propose postponing a decision on the credentials for the representative of Myanmar, a proposal that was adopted without a vote. The credentials committee indicated that it had received two submissions for candidate to represent Myanmar at the 78th General Assembly, both dated August 16. 
One was from the permanent representative of Myanmar to the United Nations in New York, and the second was from the Myanmar Military Council's Ministry of Foreign Affairs. NUG's Deputy Minister for Foreign Affairs and Human Rights meet with U.S. Department of State Offices. On December 15, 2023, the National Unity Government's Deputy Minister for Foreign Affairs, Umu Zou, and Deputy Minister for Human Rights, U Aung Jomo, engage in discussions with officers from the U.S. Department of State. The U.S. delegation, led by adding Deputy Assistant Secretary Allison Laura Peters from Bureau of Democracy, Human Rights and Labor, included representatives from the Office of Assistant for East, South and Central Asia, Bureau of Population, Refugees and Migration, Office of Global Criminal Justice, Bureau of Democracy, Human Rights and Labor, and the Office of Mainland South Asia, Bureau of East Asian and Pacific Affairs, as announced by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs on December 16, 2023, the meeting covered various topics, including Myanmar's current situation, the status of internally displaced persons and the assistance provided to them, Rohingya refugees who had fled by boat to other countries and the current situations of the Rohingya. Central Committee of Interim Implementations of Local Administration, Prime Minister calls for expanded international coverage of Revolution Forces activities. During a meeting of the Interim Local Administration Development Central Committee on December 21st, Prime Minister Mawin Kaidan emphasized the need for broader disseminations of the activities of Revolution Forces to the international community, especially in the light of the Myanmar Military Council's inability to stabilize the country. Just a few days ago, the Honduras had to expertise special stringent policies on foreign currency exchange rates to address its foreign currency shortage, stated the Prime Minister. He added, this underscored the Honduras' lack of capability to stabilize the country. Therefore, we must increase coverage of the collective efforts of various revolution forces and consistently share this news with a wider international audience. The Prime Minister highlighted that, when summarizing the revolution's progress, it becomes evident that the Honda is approaching its demise. Consequently, the Honda has intensified efforts to divide the people and revolution forces. He stressed the importance of publicizing accurate news to counter any rumors and attempts at divisions by the Honda. Ministry of Humanitarian and Disaster Management Rehabilitations for IDPs in progress in Collin Township The Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Disaster Management announced on its social media page on December 22nd that it has distributed 64,496,750 Myanmar Juts, approximately 30,720.5 US dollar worth of food aid from international donations to fight conflict affected villages in Kolin district and one village affected by a natural disaster. The aid provided at a rate of 18,250 Myanmar charts, approximately 8.69 US dollar per person and 8,000 Myanmar charts, approximately 3.81 US dollar per household, benefited 3,211 individuals from 721 households in the six mentioned villages. The ministry highlighted its collaborations with public administrative bodies and humanitarian officers in Collin Township to ensure that aid, both domestic and international, reaches timely to those who truly need it. NUG sends commemorative message for Ta'ao Nation and New Year. On December 16, the National Unity Government and NUG convey a commemorative message for Ta'ao Nation and New Year. The message acknowledges Ta'ao ethnic group's long lasting history of resistance against the discriminations and oppressions of the terrorist military council, advocating for the right to self determination and national equality. The message highlighted the challenges ethnic group face in persevering their traditions, culture, literature and celebrations amid discriminations and operations under the terrorist military council. It expressed solidarity, noting that all ethnic groups are dedicating their life to the Spring Revolution against the Honda, 
aiming to break free from its oppression. The message conveys the NUG wishes for the armed people to have an auspicious 2715 National New Year and swiftly achieve the goal of dismantling the military council and all forms of dictatorship, leading to the emergence of a federal democratic republic. Ministry of Defense, NUG sends commemorative message on 35th anniversary of UWSB establishment. On December 20, the National Unity Government's Ministry of Defense issued a commemorative message for the 35th anniversary of the establishment of the United World State Party, UWSP. The message, while respecting and acknowledging the political stance of the UWSP, extended an invitation to collaborate in rooting out the military dictatorship and establishing a federal democratic union. NUG dissolved UMF CCI. On December 24, the National Unity Government's Ministry of Commerce issued a notification 1 2023 officially dissolving the Union of Myanmar Federations of Chambers of Commerce and Industry, UMF CCI, along with its constitution. The notification prohibits the use or withdrawal of the Federation assets and finances. According to the notification, the UMF CCI, an economic institution supposed to prioritize the interests of the people, has been found to provide financial assistance and collaborate with terrorist military council, violating human rights, committing war crime, genocide and crime against humanity, as well as violating workers rights. The notification also warns that any business person or staff continuing to be involved with the UMFCCI, utilizing its assets and finances or working under its name, will be labeled as a supporter of the terrorist military council and will be prosecuted in accordance with existing counter-terrorism laws. 2023, fourth week of December, Military Affairs Summary during the third and fourth weeks of December 2023, fighting occurred in Mendo and Gango townships of Magui region, Yidashi township of Bogo region, and Gokkai and Mendo townships of northern Shan state. Meanwhile, terrorist military council troops deserted their camps without a fight in Bamao townships of Sagai region and Machambo township in Kachin state. The terrorist military council camps along the Thunan River in the northern part of the country have also been destroyed while terrorist military council troops are being attacked near their naval base in Rakhai state. The commander of the terrorist military councils, like Infantry Battalion 101, has also reportedly fallen in the battle. The Yad District Battalion 4 and resistance forces intercepted the terrorist military council's column entering near the tip of the Rakhayomar in Mindong Township, Magui region, and killed seven terrorist military council's officers. PDF also took over Nitaze base in Gango Township. As the fighting increases and more areas are taken over by resistance forces, over 100 non citizen staff in Tijang Township have joined the revolution. Battalion 3501 of the Tangu District PTF, in spite of personnel and equipment related to the Terrace Military Council, along with the Taraga Gaimbin Road in Itachi Township, the CDF Kaka has announced that 10 Terrace Military Council officers fell during the battle to take over bones on base in Haka Township, near the boundary between Magui Region and Sinste, while six Terrace Military Council officers, including a captain, were captured alive along with 32 firearms. The base was seized through the joint efforts of the Chin National Army, CDF Tendela, CDF KKG, and CDF Hakar. Thus, the revolution has increased fighting in Magui and Bagel regions during the last week of December, along with a greater area of occupation, while more people have joined the civil disobedience movement. Operation 1027 has increased its offensive and is currently attacking Mendo and fighting is occurring in Kokai as well. Allied forces are attempting to capture Kokai after having seized Namsam and Namkam. The Kachi Independence Army has seized the inspection gate at Namkam Bridge on the trade route near the China Myanmar border in Kokai Township. Meanwhile, the terrorist military council withdrew its force of 50 officers without a fight from their base located about a mile from Bamao Township. 
another terrorist military council base in the Inkaga area of Machambo Township, Kitchen State, retreated without a fight. The terrorist military council has been withdrawing its smaller bases as resistant forces increase momentum in their offensive and their area of occupation. As well, the Karen National Liberation Army and Allied forces seized the military council base along the river in northern part of the country. The base housed 100 Honda officers and was reinforced with concrete bunkers. Allied forces reported there were 70 enemy fatalities and siege weapons and ammunition. Fighting occurred near terrorist military houses, the Nyawudi naval base in Chaopu, Rakhai State, while the Arakan army was able to rebel three enemy boats from sending reinforcements in Baudo. Interestingly, there are reports that Brigadier General Mimintung, who led the terrorist military houses LIB 101, has either been killed or captured. The PDF have expanded their military operations in the last week of December 2023 while increasing their area of occupation in Sinsti and Magui region. There has been increased battle to take over towns in northern Shan State, and more towns are being seized while military council officers as high-ranking as battalion commanders have been defeated. This has led to the military council's withdrawal of its smaller bases in the face of increased military suppression. Let's see what do we have for our weekly roundup news in coming week. Thanks for watching PVTV International.